culture. We see it every day, everywhere around us. Culture affects the way we dress, how we get from one place to another. And culture also affects the music that we listen to all the while. Culture affects the places that we eat, the foods that we eat, how we eat them, and perhaps most importantly, culture affects how we interact during all of it. But what happens when we move beyond the dominant culture to a specific subculture at the University of Kansas? What do we find then? Not everybody in the community knows that we are around, um, being that we are so, like I said, we're so scattered and we're struggling to get events out there. People see it, but they don't hear it, I should say. Um, I don't want to call it a sleeping giant by no means and saying, you know, it's, it's, it's here, just need a big spark to wake them up. I think the people here is just that with KU being such a large institution, you may not always see it. At KU, I don't feel that there is a Latino community. I mean, there's organizations as far as HALO or the Multicultural Center, um, but I really don't feel that any one thing about being Latino sticks out here at college. I think, um, like I said, there's not enough diversity where it would stand out. So I do feel more a part of the actual KU community as a whole as opposed to just like the Latino uh, culture because I don't, I don't really see it as much as I would like to see it here. Kansas Latino population is expanding. In fact, this whole Midwestern region, the Latino population is expanding. And, uh, and so we're going to be seeing not just a lot more Latinos in the region as a whole, but in the university. I'm really hoping that KU can take advantage of this growing Latino presence in the state of Kansas. It's a, it's a very uh, wonderful community, family-oriented, hardworking, terrific values, um, and I want them on this campus. Izaguirre said Latino families in Kansas have not traditionally valued education. Izaguirre is a member of a KU Latino Vision Council that Liviera formed to break this trend. I didn't know enough about the various communities in Kansas uh, to really guide the recruitment. So we put together a, a council of leaders from the Latino communities in Wichita, Kansas City, Lawrence, Garden City, Liberal, uh, around the state. We very carefully identified community leaders who could come in and just give us advice about recruiting Hispanic students. Izaguirre said Spanish is a big part of the promotional tours he and La Riviera take of the Latino communities in Kansas each year. I think it's a slow process, but it's a moving process. I think with the posters that we have um, that are in Spanish to say, Tutinas Casa Aquí, if you have a home here, that's attracting more individuals saying, wow, I can go to, I can go there. I, if I have a home there, I can claim it for my own and I can go. We have a web page from the admissions office completely in Spanish um, that help answer some of the questions. So that's your first language. You don't have to worry about translating first. You, can, you will in the long run, but at least you can see it first and foremost. We do Army Familia programs with the, um, with the admissions office and the Office of Multicultural Affairs to actually go out to um, Southwest Kansas, even Kansas City, and do a program completely in Spanish for the parents to say, this is what you, your um, son and daughter should be preparing for to go to college. Even though it is sponsored by KU, we say go to college. Don't just stop after high school um, and call it quits, but actually go somewhere. And it's okay to leave home. Lisa Pinamani-Cress, the director of the KU Office of Admissions and Scholarships, 
said KU's efforts to reach out to Latino communities across Kansas are paying off. The total population is about 3.5% of the uh, student population. That's the undergraduate population, and that's um, the highest percentage it has been um, in many years, actually from what I know in the history of KU. And we also had the largest incoming freshman class amount this year. Metz says the gradual nature and the increase in the Latino community at KU has just been a part of cultural relativism. Often there's a lot of pulls to be complacent back home and take a job back home like your parents did. Um, after all, it's a big advance from where they came from in Mexico. So it seems like they've made it when they got a meatpacking job. We've got this incipient population who's really um, got a lot of motivation. They're very smart, they're very bright, they're very adventurous. Um, they have to be to kind of step out of that and, and go head to head with the students here. Gaire worked for eight years in a meatpacking plant with her parents. She now is a full-time student and works at Youngberg Hall. I was born in Mexico, raised here, and I believe that I'm very much Americanized in that way. So I might not feel different from my peers, but I know that whenever I'm in a classroom and I'm one of maybe 40, 50 people and I'm the only uh, Hispanic in the classroom, that I, I do think that they consider me to be different. Even though I might not consider myself to be different, they do. And I think that that's in turn why I start considering myself different. Gaire said Latinos make up over half of the population in her hometown of Liberal. I guess before you're just not as socially aware that you are a Hispanic until you're put into a situation where you're the only one. Nancy Cardosa also works at Youngberg Hall and has parents who worked in meatpacking plants in Liberal. She is the first in her family of seven to attend college. They both work at a beefpacking plant and that's one thing they told me. You're not going to be working here after high school, you're going to go to school. Both Friere and Cardosa also hope to go to law school after college and become immigration lawyers. Both of my parents are immigrants as well as I am. They brought me here when I was very, very young. And um, I know they have struggled a lot, and especially to get their own citizenship. Um, and I know other people have struggled through it, and I would really, really enjoy being able to help those people that are actually trying to make a living here in the United States. As much as Latinos like Friday and Cardosa see college as a tool to help other Latinos, La Riviera says their presence helps the university as well. It's a two-way street when you come to, to a university. You take away a lot uh, in the form of what you learn and the people you meet, but you also bring a lot because you bring your own experience, your own background, etc. And we need that here. We need that Latino influence here on this campus.